just like candy. Oh, what's happening? How we doing? Weedy Wonka in the house. Just kidding. It's your girl Edwell D here. And welcome to Happy Chef Live. And it landed. <laughs> so I am welcoming you guys to the first recipe in the deliciously happy portion of the Happy Chef Expert Cannabis Cookbook available to you guys on Amazon. And as you can see here, we're gonna, I'm going to be going through with you all all the weed science chunks, but also the extraction chunks. There's the important ones. But then right here, we're going to bring you to this page if you're following along in my Happy Chef Cookbook. The first recipe, the infamous happy gummies. Yeah, all right. So again, purchase your cookbook on edibled.com or Amazon's. Please leave a review for the chef. All right, all right. Oh, also, we also have my beginner's edition, the Happy Chef THC that I published back in 2014 with my good friend, Be Real of Cypress Hill. It actually includes his album, The Prescription, as a free download in there for you. So be sure to get both of those because they're just too cute. So, the Sugar Mama OG is about ready to teach you some sugar, baby. So, uh, to get y'all going on the gummy recipe, I have everything all set up for you guys. I'm gonna walk you through step by step of how the happy chef does it. Because, you know, as we saw earlier in the video, we went over all of the ingredients. And um, now I'm gonna show you how it's done. Now it's done. Okay, so first we're gonna need, you're gonna need a pot. Make sure you get one of those. Also, anything and everything you cook with the tweed, make sure you use silicon because uh, the oil, if you're cooking with oils, and the oils that are extracted out of the plant, they don't stick on silicone like they do everything else. So be sure to get you guys some silicone cookware. As well as the extra important for this particular recipe, your molds. Be sure to, uh, these molds are actually, they're very inexpensive. They're available on Amazon. I think it was $9.99 for a two pack. So, um, and these cavities, they're great cavities, great serving size for, um, for everybody. And uh, each one of these cavities, uh, when I make my gummies, is a net weight of 3.25 uh, grams per gummy per chew. So that's very important to know because everything, when it comes to can, can of chef and happy chef, has to be the same net weight and size so that when you dose it, everything is the same dose. So. In my cookbook, I kind of break it down to you guys the Americanized way of cups and teaspoons. However, the happy chef way and the way we do it professionally in the, in the ganja kitchens of the world is we got to switch on over to the metric system. And that's what I'm going to go with you guys today. So let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so for real. I really wish that I could have some uh, music in the background, but because of YouTube and artist copyright issues, I don't want to offend anybody. And also, I don't want to get this video taken down, but normally, and a Happy Chef recommendation, I recommend you guys blasting some good tunes because it helps put the love in it. It helps put the love in the batch, and we're all about the love, right? One love. So let's go ahead and start combining the ingredients. Now, what I would recommend, just so, there's no waste because I don't like waste. I don't like wasting my medicine and I don't like wasting my ingredients. So every happy chef needs a scale. Be sure to get one and be sure you can get one that's consets to grams. So you get your pot and this right, my, right here, my friends, is how we're gonna do what I call the, the sugar solvent part of the recipe. So in this pot, we're actually gonna combine um, your sugar your corn syrup, your citric acid, um, and your coconut oil to start. And uh, then I'll, I'll get to all the other stuff first. But as, like, as I was telling you, I like to limit waste. So instead of you know, measuring out each ingredient, I suggest just putting the pot right on top of the scale and just tearing it each time you add, once you get to the exact weight. That way, 
you know, less waste and also less mess because chefs love to cook, but we don't like to clean dishes. So, alrighty, alright, alright. So, okay. So in my Happy Chef recipe, as I said, we were going through um, the cups and teaspoons bit. We're going to go through the grams part of this one. And the recipe that's in the cookbook calls for, um, well, I'm just going to go ahead and convert it for you. We'll convert it to grams. It's 245 grams of corn syrup. So we're going to start with that, okay? So add your corn syrup in first. Be sure that your scale, again, is set to grams. All right, so we got the corn syrup, so now it's time to add the sugar, sugar. So, again, tear the weight. Bam, and we're back. Add some of the sugar. All right, now we're going to do 225 grams of sugar. So, let's get it going. Okay. Bam. All right, now, and we're going to do the citric acid, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, as well as, okay, now you can do this recipe in a couple of ways. Uh, how I have it listed in the cannabis uh, cookbook is because I don't know what's available to you. Raw plant matter is usually easier to get, um, especially depending on where you are located in our beautiful world which I have some infused coconut oil right here. However, in this recipe, I'm gonna show you how to do it with extract, okay? So, but we'll get to that a little bit later. We'll get to that a little later. So, however, I do need to put some coconut oil in this baby uh, because you need that fat. You need like every girl, every happy chef loves a fatty. So we're gonna add some of that high saturated fat in there so that the herb binds well to it. So, and here we go, I got some coconut oil right here. And you wanna add about 30 grams of coconut oil. So again, tear the weight. All right, let's see. Watch. Is that not cute? That's so cute, it's 30 grams right there. Oh. You can tell I've done this before. <laughs> all right, so now that we got all this going, um, now an important part of infusion is time and temperature, especially temperature and getting a good bloom on your gummies. Now bloom is, how I'm gonna describe that is when you take a gummy, a gummy bear, and you press it down real hard, then you let go and it pops back into shape, that's a good bloom. And you can turn especially this recipe calls for gelatin, you can turn gelatin into jello real fast. So um, you have to make sure you keep a good eye on your temperature. And so I'm going to move this on the heat because whoosh, it needs to be on the heat. I want to make, we have to make sure the uh, sugar solvent, that stays about 155 to 165, which is also what we're going to get to next, the same temperature. You want to make sure that you hold those temperatures, which is also why I'm using a separate burner besides my gas stove over here, because it's a little bit harder for me to control the heat on, uh, on, this, on this bad boy. But so I have my portable burner here, which this is what I do my demonstrations with my Happy Chef Live class and the show that I do here in Las Vegas. Please join my class on your next Sin City trip. And um, uh, also it's easier, like I said, it's easier for me to control the temperature. So while this uh, melts down and, you know, emulsifies, uh, if you, Hear the uh, the beautiful water sound in the background. It's actually not a fountain. That's actually my sous vide, uh, which you saw photographed earlier. A sous vide is an amazing cooking tool, and it helps me keep everything at an exact temperature. It's also great for the lazy happy chefs at home that you know maybe you want to go run some errands or whatnot. Uh, you could actually put you know steaks, meats in a bag with some seasonings and kind of like do put it in put it in the water bath and it will just cook while you're gone. So but the, but using the sous vide today that's how I'm gonna do uh, my gelatin solvent which we're gonna do right now. You're gonna take your Ziploc bag also shown to you earlier and we're gonna double up the bags because that is very important to do. 
um, because the worst thing that can happen is you get everything infused and you get everything going and then the bag busts in, in the water bath and you, that's just no fun. So we're just going to skip that part because it's all about having fun, right guys? And... Whoa. Damn. So what we're doing here is we're going to add the gelatin. Now I use powdered unflavored gelatin for this. Um, you can also, if you choose, you can get, you know, the flavored jello packets, but it's, I wouldn't recommend do it, doing it that way uh, because there's other ingredients and stuff in that. I'd rather do it, the, you know, the old fashioned, all yourself way. So we're going to add 70 grams of gelatin in the bag, okay? So, all right. Damn. I'm kind of scoot it so the powder's all the way down at the bottom, all right? And then you're gonna take 140 grams of good old H2O, okay? Now, when you pour the water in, just like a dad, you're gonna kind of move the powder around so that everything kind of multiplies a little bit. You wanna make sure it's evenly kind of mixed and whatnot. Now, it's gonna look clumpy at first, and uh, you just want to make sure you kind of move all the clumps that are in the corners uh, in the water. So, all right, here we go. See how it looks kind of clumpy and yeah. So you're gonna move all that down like so. Seal her up, buttercups. So now we gotta put it in the water bath. Just like candy, candy. Ow. All right, so. And as you see here, we have a nice little water bath and it's floating around. So the sous vide is set at a temperature of 155, which is a nice perfect bloom because when we, when we add it into the sugar solvent, we want everything to be the same temperature. And let me see. So. We're gonna, we're gonna wait a little bit because we gotta let everything heat up and then join me in a second. And we're back, darlings. We're back, darlings. Okay, so now the mix is all nice and fast. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. So we gotta be a smooth criminal and do some infusion, okay? And get my handy dandy extraction. So, my oil that I'm using today is at 75% potency. So as we're looking at the formula, and uh, let's go ahead and break down. So the molds that I was showing you guys earlier that are available on Amazon, and I, I believe it's uh, two, a two pack for $9.99. These molds have 81 cavities. And as I said, the net weight of each gummy per cavity is 3.25 grams. So um, the batch that I'm making right now that I just weighed out for you all, this fills three of these molds, okay? Like down to the last cavity. As I've already done the measurements and weights for you guys, so it's pretty easy now. And all right, so if, if each mold has 81 cavities, and th uh, this batch makes three molds, so that's 243 cavities total. And we're timesing that, I wanna make each one of these servings 10 milligrams. The adult use recreational dose, prefer, well, recommended dose. And so with that, we do 243 times 10, that equals 2,430 milligrams. So that's how many milligrams I gotta put in this baby. And so we're gonna divide that by the oral potency, 75, we're gonna move that decimal over. So we're gonna divide that by 750, which leaves us with our exact amount of extract of oil that we're gonna put into our batch, which math checks at 3.24 mLs or grams that are going in this baby. So if you are infusion with infused coconut oil, then you already added that to the batch. And again, those methods are at page 68 of my expert cannabis cookbook, The Happy Chef, where I actually break down the infusion part of how to cook your vegetable oils, coconut oils, 
and all of that. So be sure to check out that. I also have methods on my website at edibled.com. And also, say you guys have a you know a job or a career that you guys can't enjoy the benefits of the of my favorite plant. Uh, there's also options where you can make terpene infused gummies, which terpenes are completely legal and um, also very medicinal. So I have a list of great terpene sources and distributors for you guys also on my website, www.edibledee.com. So uh, let's go ahead and start infusing this baby. Now the oil is gonna be kind of hard, a little thick, so you don't just wanna take it off and like ooh, try to squeeze it out. So we're gonna add a little heat to it. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna put on that baby. And now you're gonna hold it. I hold mine probably like a little bit, like a little way, like this. Of course, you don't want to burn the syringe because that's a that's a horrible mess. And again, you could use your infused coconut oil. That'd probably be easier for most of you happy chefs at home. However, if you are working with distillate or full spectrum oil, uh, this is definitely a nice way to go because you get rid of that plant matter taste which this is also how the edibles are made on the um, professional medicinal market. Uh, we infuse with extract. So once you warm it up a bit, kind of loosen it up so it's easier to disperse. We're gonna weigh out 3.24 mLs. I think that's about nice. We are now infused people. All right, now remember, time and temperature is the most important thing when you're happy chefing. And you wanna make sure everything is mixed really well. So don't, uh, and we're gonna keep, remember to keep this, now use, you want to use immersion thermometers so this one I find to be a good one uh, also has you know the markings of hard crack soft crack when you're making hard candy etc it's a great candy thermometer um, there's also these immersion thermometers we got this oil and candy thermometer right here which is digital it's kind of cute and you know there's all different kinds you wish one that you're comfortable with um, however there is you know don't rely on the, uh, the surface thermometers per se, because it only is gonna let you know the temperature of the exact surface, not necessarily uh, the inside. So, uh, as I said, you want to mix this really, really well so that your dose is even. And you already have the coconut oil in there, so it's gonna bind that nice fatty. And we're gonna mix this up. All right, do a little mix. All right, we're looking cute. Okay. All right, I think, you know, I think our gelatin's done. Yeah, it is, it is. So now we gotta add the gelatin in there. Now, and as you saw from the ingredients list, which is also available to you at the, big, uh, at the end of this video for you to screenshot, um, we do not add the flavoring or the food coloring until the very end because you can actually cook out the flavoring and you want a nice yummy flavor, right? You gotta get delicious. So all right, let's look at this gelatin, pour it out of the, ooh, check you out, man, all right. Yeah, now how you know that's done is cause you can kind of see through it. You know what I mean? It's not all the clumps are gone that were in there before. It's nice and, uh, yep. All right, so now we gotta add this baby to the batch. While I do that, discard, discard, throw it away. And the flavor that I've decided to do today, I think sour apple would be kind of cute. So, cause you know, green is always green. So that's exactly what we're doing. And I, um, flavor always is as it depends. I like to do about 10 grams to 12 grams, depending on the flavoring that you're using. Um, into the batch that makes a nice uh, potent flavor. So I'm gonna add my sour apple flavoring in like so. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as well as your food coloring. Now your food coloring depends on how dark you want the hue. This one I'm gonna do about 10 drops. 
Yeah. All right, that's a nice, nice hue of green. That's pretty green. My mama's favorite color. All right, the best thing about the food coloring, I'll also let you know everything's even because got a nice even color. So I say, nice pretty green. Ugh, I can smell that apple. All right, so this is nice and mixed. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna pour these into our molds. Now again, make sure these molds, make sure they're lightly dusted with cornstarch. That way, the, the, the gummies are easily popped out. But again, make sure they're night, they're lightly dusted, not like clumps in there because those will show up in your finished product. So you just sprinkle a little cornstarch on it and then do a little bit of uh, clap action. All right. So. Let's go ahead and pour these in our nice dusted molds. And then you're going to take the spatula and you're going to smooth her out. Yeah, get them all in there. Ooh, that means they're going to work. They're going to work. Now what you wanna do now is you want to let these sit out for a good 15, 20 minutes, and then you're gonna pop them in the freezer just for probably about an hour or two, and then we'll pop them out. 